Okay, so this is the package I received from Amazon. I ordered all the products separately and they packaged them all up into one box. So first things first, we have the, I ordered 700, no, that's ridiculous, 450 fiber optics. They did not come with this installed. In fact, I wanted to show you this. I opened this box previously before and that's why. Okay, let me get this set up. Okay. Okay, so the way it works is uh, on one side of the fiber optics, it comes free, just they're loose. On the other end, they, tape, they went ahead and taped it for you. So it's nice and tight. It comes with this little coupling fitting here. And when you unscrew it, you'll see that there are little notches on the end. So the way this works is this end goes into the light engine and this side grips onto the fiber optics. So first you're gonna put the cap on there a little bit, just very lightly. You stick the fiber optics in there. Now, normally it can scoot as high up or down as you want. Now it's gonna do that until you tighten it. Once you start tightening the top, you're gonna notice that it's starting to grip onto the fiber optics. And now it does not move, it's nice and tight now. Over here we have our light engine. Now this is actually a wheel that spins inside there and that causes the twinkling effect. It has the power outlet where you plug the plug into there and plug it into the wall or into your car. Right here, I believe this is a microphone that picks up your voice or music. That way the lights can go to the beat of the music. And here's the cable for the antenna uh, for the remote. It comes with a wireless remote. But the thing is that it did come with a wireless remote, but it didn't come with a battery. So I need to go to the store and buy the battery separately. I chose this specific kit because it has, not only does it have the motor on and off for the twinkling, you can control the motor speed, that's normal. And yes, it does do the jumps and the fades and the flashes. It has a, its own unique white, the W right here, a white button for the color white. But I also got it because it has the music on, music off. Um, some of them either come with the music on, music off, which is also voice, so it'll allow the fiber optics to jump to the beat of the song you have. And some of them will come with this, but they will not come with the twinkle. And this is a very unique kit because it came with both the music on and off, the breathe feature, all the jumps, the white, all the colors, but it also came with a twinkle. And I couldn't find a kit anywhere else online, on eBay or anywhere else, other than this one supplier on Amazon. And if I can, I'll see if I can put a link in there for you. So I'm very glad that I scooped this one up while I was able to. Also went and, let me see if I can set up my tripod. I got these auto trim removal kits because what I noticed on the YouTube channels that I've been watching is a lot of people are using screwdrivers and makeshift tools to remove the paneling from their cars. So I figured I don't want to scratch my interior or rate, uh, ruin or break some of the clips. I want to preserve as many as I can. So I went ahead and bought a simple five piece kit. And it should help me remove, oh sorry. It should help me remove some of the trim. There's another one some sort of a clip. Now I also have to go on YouTube and learn how to use some of these tools. They offer suggestions on what these tools can be used for. Like this, you can slide it on the clip and pry it up versus sticking a screwdriver in there, you know. My light kit is, I got a 400, 450 pieces. They're 0 0.75 millimeters, 
uh, and then it says times three meters, and I believe the three meters is 9.8 feet. So I think it's nine feet, eight inches. I also got two Gorilla Glues. They're the exact same one. I just opened this one because I wanted to try it out. I noticed a lot of people are using, uh, they're using hot glue guns and I don't want to break the wheel and reinvent the wheel or whatever, but I thought I'd try something like this because I've heard that people say hot glue guns, uh, if the metal tip from the hot glue gun touches the fiber optics, it could ruin it or melt it. Uh, also the heat from the glue itself. They say don't use super glue because super glue will react with the fiber optics and kind of do a chemical reaction and burn them also. So I, I tried a little dab of this on some cardboard. Um, it says allow 24 hours to cure, but within seconds, it was already hardening up. Um, and let's see. You can kind of see it's kind of soft still, so it hasn't 100% dry, but I put a big glob on there. And now you see it wiggling around, but it's not on my finger at all. It's pretty solid. And I imagine within 24 hours, it'll be hardened. And it, I guess it seems to have the same effect as a hot glue gun, but minus the heat. So we're gonna try this out, and if it works, great. Uh, I also chose it because it's waterproof, permanent bond, holds in just seconds. It's made for, you know, all these things, wood, ceramic, but the one that got me was plastic down here. I've read multiple places that make sure to use a glue that is good with plastic, because essentially fiber optics are plastic. So. I got the Gorilla Glue, I'll try it out. And if it doesn't work the way I think it's gonna work, or if I don't like the way it works for whatever reason, I'll just do what everyone else does. Okay, so I believe I have here 14 gauge wire, 25 feet black, 25 feet in red. Got this off of Amazon also. Um, 12 volt wire, I guess. Anyway, from some of the research I did online, it seemed to imply that this would be a good gauge for the type of project I'm working on. And I'm gonna try to go through the fuse box or any type of wire that I run to this, I'm gonna be using this type of wire. So uh, this is a small, simple wire that I can use to run through the carpet or behind panels and stuff to plug this in. I got this kit with two fuse tats so I can stick these into my fuse and replace one of the fuses with another fuse down here. They, they gave me a few fuses. I wasn't expecting that. I was just expecting to go by my own anyway. But So basically the way this works is you put your original fuse in one slot and the new fuse goes in the old or on the top slot and this one with the wire will go towards whatever you're trying to install. In this case, it's gonna be the light engine over here. So that's what I'll be doing with these here. Now, I bought so many of these because they don't really sell them in singles, but I only needed about two or three of these little female connectors here. But in here too, I, I didn't need but one switch, but they all come like in packages of a ton of switches. So I got me a three-way switch or a three-prong switch. I'm not really like tech savvy on that, but so it has a power here off and a power on this side too. So it's two sources of power that I can use. And I got these little connectors just in case I end up going this route with the switch. All I gotta do is put, put a wire in here into the blue connector and then just plug it into my switch and have a nice solid good connection. That way I won't have wires just hanging around everywhere. I want everything to be pretty legit. And the last thing I ordered was what I hope works. To be, instead of drilling holes, which I've heard can ruin the headliner and the fabric, and there's also a little cushion inside the headliners, I went ahead and I bought some upholstery pins. This one's an inch and a half in length from, from this side to this side. And I tried it out on a piece of cardboard to see if it would work. Uh, if it works easily on cardboard, maybe it would work easy on the headliner. Or maybe not, maybe it might be a hassle. I was able to make a few holes. It's small, it's super tiny really sharp. Now these holes are not very big at all. Um, I imagine that maybe I can even widen them up. I'm not sure if that's the case with the headliner, 
but I assume I could widen them up. Now, when you compare the size of that hole to the size of these fiber optics, they're super tiny. So I actually do think they'll squeeze perfectly snug into that hole, but we'll find out soon enough. I, I was also curious about this too. In some of the other videos, it seemed like people used a filler material to fill in the gap between the metal clamp and the fiber optics. But no, there was no filler material in this. It's just the piece of plastic with those little prongs that I showed you that they have to grip onto it. So I guess in if you wanted to, you could even go and order fiber optic string all by itself and add even more strands to this kit that, that it already comes with. Last thing I need to show you that I didn't show you is Light Engine comes with either this AC adapter or a car port you know, a cigarette lighter adapter. So, I mean, I assume we could plug this into the Light Engine, plug this into, you know, some sort of a light, uh, a cigarette lighter, maybe even the cigarette lighter, could, like the, the female part of the cigarette lighter would be maybe even connected to one of these fuses. So it would turn on whenever the car turns on. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to go that route yet, but it's an option. I mean, there's a lot of options you can do. Some people have even had uh, connected it with this and then used an AC-DC power inverter, I believe, or power converter or whatever. But I don't know. That seems like a, a step in, the, not the wrong direction, but maybe just an additional step I wouldn't need to take. Okay, so let's try this out. Okay, so the way this works, it's a pretty good sized box, actually. Okay, like I said, this is the microphone, the plug, for, you know, the outlet. This is the remote sensor. Uh, this is something that I would probably strap down with zip ties or Velcro somewhere on in, in the trunk of my car is where I'm going to aim to go. This here has the little hole slots for the light, and it spins, and it produces a twinkling effect. There's a little screw right up here on the top. Now, when you stick this in there, when you stick your, you see there's a little groove. Now that screw is gonna catch onto that groove. So you stick these in there and you tighten up this screw right here and it'll keep it locked in place right there. Go ahead and plug it in. There it goes. Now, like I said, this would be firmly planted in, screwed in tightly. And the light goes through all of these fiber optics and comes out in these tiny little strands. And I've noticed this before on other videos on YouTube, but uh, it's so hard to capture on camera because the light messes it up. But this little light it's literally a tiny, tiny little blinking light. And it's so hard to capture on film or camera, but you can see they're all twinkling. Let's see if we can remove this. You can see the wheel spinning. I don't want to point it directly at the camera because it will, I'm sure it'll mess up the, the video quality. There it is. Hopefully we'll be installing this here in the next four days, but for you it'll seem almost instantaneously. All right, I'll see y'all. Okay, so I have tried every which way that I knew how and could possibly do to try and get this headliner out of this car, but it is really, really congested. It will not bend, like it won't fold or bend or anything. The headliner will, but I don't want to damage it. I don't want to crease it. So basically, the way this car is structured, it's really wide in the back. So it won't fit out these doors and they don't open very wide. Or in the front either. There's not very much room in the front either. I have the front seats all the way back, all the way reclined back. The back seats, I have them folded down a little bit, but I had them up too earlier. Uh, it's just the way that I'm working on the car right now. Uh, this is what it looks like up in the top section. You have the cables that go for your dome light for the front and the back. Uh, you have the airbag 
running all along. It's just just all metal. It's really nothing to see in there. Uh, there's literally uh, this headliner is held down by this one clip. Right, those two clips right there, one, two, and held down by the the little handles. And also, there's one clip in the back. Right back there, that one clip was holding it in up in the back. And other than that, it's held down. It's held up by uh, most of the trim pieces. See, I have the the B pillar trim piece right there. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to be installing the Starlight headliner while it's still in the car. And it's a shame that my garage is a mess, otherwise I should have my car in there and work in there. But I'm going to do what I can. Last night I pulled the headliner halfway down. Today, working in about 10 minute increments, I pulled the headliner all the way down. Uh, it was about 100 degrees outside today, so I was only working in 10 minute increments at a time. Plus I have two kids that I'm watching. So, this is what I did. On the right side of the car, or the passenger side, I labeled these black things and they are glued on there really good. So R1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, way back there. I also outlined them with a the pen. So I outlined them with a the pen so that way I got their shape exactly the position that they were in. I also labeled where the pen outline is. I put R1, R2, R3, R4, and then I also matched it with R4, R3, so I can match the shape and I can also match the lettering. That way I'll put them exactly where they belong. So I'm going to remove these. I already removed them on the other side. I've already removed them over here on this other side. And you can see how I kept the shape there. I removed them so I can start poking holes and st uh, sticking the starlights through there, the fiber optic cables. And then when I'm done, I'll just put these, I'll put a little dab of glue on each corner of them. And th that'll hold them in place right there so that way I can put them over the fiber optics. And that's my current status. I'm on day two now. I went ahead and I I did 450 dots with a paint marker. And basically I just divided it in two sections. The passenger section, the driver section. Put 225 dots on this side, 225 dots on that side. Uh, I drew myself a little border right here. And then over here I put a couple red dots. I didn't do it all the way around, but basically these red dots are like my buffer zone. Like, yeah, you can put a couple there, but I wouldn't put too many. I wanted the bulk of them to be within this zone here. So I have so far this little section. I'm making about making about maybe 20 holes here using my uh, using my upholstery pen. I'm poking it through. And down here on the bottom, they're all hanging out. Uh, so I'll make about 20 holes, which I've already poked the holes in some of these here. You can't really see it. It doesn't show up on camera. Let me see here. You can kind of see there's a small little hole right there in the middle of those. Anyways, I poke about 20 holes in them. And then uh, it's getting foggy. There it is. And then I'll run the wires, 20 of them. And then I'll move on to the next section. Poke 20 holes and then put some wires in and that's pretty much it and the way oh i'm sorry and one last thing the way i'm poking the holes is I, I already have a hole through this one but i'm using an upholstery pin like this one an inch and a half long i'll go up to the dot i'll poke the needle through then I'll wiggle it around a little just to widen it just a little bit and pull it out. And that's just enough for these skinny fiber optic cables to fit through. Even if I didn't spin it like that, I think they would still fit. But I do it just as a good measure. The holes on the other side, on the back side, are almost invisible. I think this is actually a better option than drilling. I'll get back to you in a little while. I'm still installing them. Taking a lot longer. Well, I can't say it's taken a lot longer than I thought it would because I went in this knowing it was going to take a long time. Follow the cables all the way to the back, to the C-pillar. 
and you'll see I have folding seats so I was able to access it a little easier but this entire it's hard for me to see because I'm recording outside but this entire panel right here if you remove this weather stripping you see this panel has uh, little clips I, I don't have it connected but these little clips here go inside this little hole I just didn't connect it yet but this panel I removed it from where it was clipped on here pulled it back a little bit and I ran the fiber optics down into the panel it turns around goes in here into the the foam fabric of the trunk and I ran it all the way in through the trunk I had to remove two clips under here, one here and one over there. If you pull this down, you'll be able to actually see deep in there, in that little hole, I tucked the uh, tuck the fiber optics deep in there. They go through, anyways, they go in through that C pillar, and come in through down here. I tucked them all the way at the bottom because when this trunk closes, I don't want it to pinch the wires. Fiber optics come way down here. I am lucky enough that I have a little hole right here, like a little trap door, see? Uh, and I have them coming out here where I will connect them to the light engine and it'll be safely in this net. Or I really don't want to risk putting the light engine in between the metal door panel. I mean, you know, the metal panel and this, I don't want to risk like a short or a fire of any sort, but um, I'm gonna make it work regardless. Now, as far as connecting the power, I don't know if I should run a power cord through here, over the roof. Like maybe going through there. When I maybe putting the cord on top of the roof liner. Going back down this pillar here, all the way down here, since I already have it off anyway, you know. Uh, also, the reason I'm saying that is because my fuse box is on underneath the passenger side not underneath the driver's side so that's one option i guess the second option i have is if i put the box there run the power cord through here or through back there somewhere you know just tuck it underneath here like most people do with stereo speakers tuck it in down here and then be there i mean it's it's an option either way i'll probably do the latter option okay well i'm gonna stop recording and continue working This is the finished product. We have it running, fibers running through this C-pillar right here, coming out of the C-pillar, uh, going through this side of the headliner. Some of them split off, going behind the dome light. This is where the arm handle is gonna be. I'm gonna have to move some of these out of the way. Some split going that way behind the dome light, then we have some splitting over here going on in front of the dome light. I try to keep that part, that path pretty clear right there. Uh, right here, where there's a lot of congestion, was one of the trickiest parts to, to put uh, glue dots here because all of these cables or fibers wanted to 
fall down on the glue dots. And in fact, uh, it says wait about 24 hours for the glue to 100% uh, dry and cure, but it does dry in seconds for the most part. Uh, I do recommend this glue, it's really awesome. You can pull on these things and they are not going anywhere. And you don't have to worry about burning your fiber optics using a hot glue gun. And on top of that, you don't have to worry about having a hot glue gun plugged in the entire time as you're trying to do this. So I would re recommend a Gorilla, Gorilla Clear Grip. It bonds with a whole ton of stuff, metal glass fabric, which is kind of like a, you know, a headliner. It says leather, wood, paper, plastic. Plastic was the one that I needed for fiber optics. And it works amazing. So y'all need to try this. I'm gonna let this dry for a little while and then I'm gonna decide if I can, right here where I had outlined those, uh, the outlines for those pieces that go on top of here, I'm gonna see if I can put them on top of the fiber optics or if it will break them or mess it up. And if I can, hopefully tonight or later on uh, here within the next few hours, I'll start going the opposite way, putting this back on. Now, the head, uh, what is this? The uh, the dome light for the the rear dome light needs to run through here, so I'm gonna carefully like try to weave it through. It needs to go back into its little slot right there. Uh, but other than that, it shouldn't be a big deal. So for what it's worth, I went ahead and I reinstalled these. I did not press them down hard at all. They're pretty much hovering on a very thin layer of fiber optics but they're in the exact same spot that they were in before I went ahead and I ran my dome my rear dome cable wire all the way through and I went and installed these six five four three two one and one and like I did earlier I had drawn out where they used to be so they're I try to put them where they were exactly. It's just uh, since they're hovering on the fiber optic cords, it's gonna be really hard to keep them there because they're like moving left and right. They want to shift. But I was gonna install the headliner without them, but I don't really know what they do. I don't know if they're for helping to isolate sound or if they're for um, just to keep the headliner feeling sturdy so it doesn't feel like it can cave in at any minute. I don't know what it's for truly, but for what it's worth, I put them on just in case. So now I'm gonna reverse the process on installing the headliner. I've already got the, uh, removed this trim. I've already removed this trim and clipped, went ahead and clipped this panel back on again. I'll be removing this trim again as I put the headliner on. Um, all, most of the strings that were back here, there was a ton just hanging down here. I tried to get most of them and throw them over the seat to this side. Oh, it's, there it goes. Throw them over the seat to this side. Okay, no more moving my hand in front of the camera. Throws it off balance. Uh, okay, so that way I can start pulling my seat, pull my seat back where it belongs and then with the headrest of the back seat that'll hold up the headrest wait from with the headrest from the back seat that'll hold up the headliner so I can lock it back in place and then I'll start putting in all the side panel pieces and connecting the front piece as well
Did you cut it? Yeah. That was the last one? Wow, it looks really good on camera too. answer a few questions that are the most commonly asked questions across a lot of the YouTube channels that I've come across myself number one is how did I wire it I'm about one week in so far and I didn't complete the wiring the way I want to yet but I already have everything I need uh, I plan on using an accessory fuse and tapping into it using my my fuse tap wire that I bought on Amazon and connecting that into the light engine uh, the light engine is in my trunk I'm gonna velcro it down so that way it won't be sliding around if I make any sharp turns or anything uh, then wiring that to some sort of a, uh, a fuse that way they turn on when I turn on my car I even saw a diagram that I have found online that says if you put a switch uh, a three-prong switch you can light you can um wire it up to the dome light supervisory switch and i haven't figured out how to do that yet but i know there's a lot of car guys out there that can help me out with that and that way the the twinkle stars will light up even when you open your door uh, or whenever you just turn on your car they can light up that way too so I have the switch I have everything I need for it now I just need to wire it up in the meantime the light engine that I have came with both it came with an AC adapter so I can plug it into a wall it also came with the carport uh, you know the, the lighter outlet which I'm using currently. So the light engine is in my trunk and my my back seats fold down. Uh, you know, it has one side that folds down, the other side folds down. Right there in between the crack of those two, I squeeze a little wire through there. And then I just plugged it in the back seat lighter outlet. And that's just temporary for now. I don't have anyone ever sitting in the back seat, so no one would ever notice it. But I do intend on running the wire to the fuse tap that's how I ran the wire I did end up purchasing the fuse tap wire uh, I also bought like I think 14 gauge I'll check it out here in a minute 14 gauge wire about 25 or 50 feet of wire that way I could run it another question that I was wondering I haven't seen this asked too many times on other YouTube channels but one thing that I have ask myself is when I was buying them they come in like six foot version uh, the the core the the fibers they come in six foot nine foot eight inches and 13 feet And I was wondering, like, I wanted to buy the 13 foot because I wanted to make sure, like, extra sure that I could have enough room. I bought the 9 feet 8 inches one, and there was way more than enough. Mine is a four-door car, but it's a smaller coupe. So it's not as big as, like, I don't know, one of the larger sedans. But 
nine feet eight inches was really long now when we were cutting these lights down you know how everyone pokes them through and then there's a lot of strings hanging down those strings actually came from way up here at the headliner all the way down to the seat and when i was trying to install the headliner again i was actually sitting on some of those uh cords the the fibers so i actually had to cut them down a few times just so that way i wouldn't sit on them and accidentally pull them through the hole after they had the glue um so the size that i got was 0.75 millimeters i believe and it was 450 strands And I explained it earlier, but the way I did it was I just divided my headliner directly down the middle, put 225 on this side, 225 on this side, and that equaled up to my 450 stars. And I chose to do the 450 because uh, it was the most bang for my buck. They also have a 550, but it only comes in a 13 foot, um, 13 foot long fibers and that was just overkill for me so i did not do the 13 foot but i did do the nine foot eight and i think a lot of people will find the nine foot eight inch length a good a, a really good size it's way longer than i needed it even extended past beyond my trunk which is perfect though because it allowed me to stick the light engine in the trunk if i would have got the six foot they have like a six foot uh version too if I would have got a six foot length, that might have been pushing it. Like I may not have had enough room to stick the light box in the trunk. I mean, I could have maybe figured it out, but it was like, yeah, that's pushing it. So how long did it take? It took me, I took my time within four days. So it took me all of the four days from start to completion now one thing you got to realize is i was watching my two kids and one of them was inside he's old enough to to be able to watch himself and feed himself and stuff uh, i had another one which is uh, about a year and six months old and he's running around here with me it was 100 degrees outside so i was working in about 10 to 15 minute increments also trying to watch the baby that's one of my regrets is that I didn't get to record the how-to on this, but unless you have a designated video camera guy, I actually have a tripod and I guess I should have put the tripod on, but there were so many weird angles that I had to get at that I couldn't capture everything. But it took, if I could compress all those 10 minute and 15 minute increments, also whenever the baby would go down for a nap, I'd come out here and work for about an hour or two while he was asleep. If I were to compress it all, if I was just non-stop 100% going at it, I would say maybe 12 hours, 12 to 15 hours, but I think more on the 12, nine to 12 hour range. I think that's a pretty comfortable amount of time. Also, I wasn't in my garage. I don't think I could have comfortably removed this headliner without bending it a lot. There was one little part where it kind of creased a little bit uh, while I was trying to wiggle it out and trying to figure out a way to get it out and it creased a little bit and it made like a little indention and I didn't and it was so small and I just figured if, if it made that indention from just doing this I'm not gonna fold this thing and get it out now can you see the fibers light up in the daytime yes you absolutely can see the fibers in the daytime uh, it actually looks like right now that they look a lot brighter and a lot bigger at night especially it's hard to capture it on camera because on the camera they look a lot bigger than they really do out here they look like tiny little pinpricks on on my headliner but on camera they show up amazing looking uh in the daytime they do look like the little pinpricks you can still see them in the daytime perfectly every color you can see all the colors red green yellow they all show up in the daytime can you feel them if you touch the headliner yes you can i cut mine flushed with the headliner but i could probably even clip it a little more i just have it because i really don't want to uh, so the thing is that the closer you put it towards the headliner it it, it kind of distorts the the light a little bit so right now they look like perfect little pin pricks there's hardly any sticking out of the headliner but it's just almost flushed but if i were to 
on my headliner, I still have the foam. So a lot of people, what I see on YouTube is they remove their headliner, they sand it all down and they put some glue and put on like some sort of suede black headliner. Those people don't, I don't believe they have any foam underneath their headliner. It's literally just a fiberglass or plastic headliner with the fabric on top. They can flush theirs as flush as they can. Now my headliner still has the foam fabric. I was able, and it's kind of like a cloth material. So it's the stock material and I was able to poke the holes, feed it through the cloth and um, have this. So if I press it flat against the, uh, the foam, the foam layer of the head, head, um, head, whatever it's called, I believe the foam will distort the light a little. It'll make the star look a little bigger, but it'll look a little cloudy. And from other people that I've heard read comment on YouTube, that will allow, it'll make the star look a little cloudy like it's a foggy hazy night so yeah you could probably do some of them like that but i chose not to do all of them like that so yes you can kind of feel them on your hand but i don't recommend like always touching them all the time anyway and no one ever seems to and also yeah you can see them in the daytime now one question i had was does this affect the lifespan i don't want to spend all this time and effort poking holes into my headliner and then the sucker is bad and like three months now the damage to your headliner I mean I didn't fold mine I didn't tear it apart and I know most people fold and uh, squeeze theirs out or it fits out of their car comfortably I did mine in the car still so it didn't fold it didn't bend the foam's still in great condition and these tiny holes you got to understand that even though there's 450 of these things despite adding a little bit of weight on the top of the headliner there's probably a little bit of weight these things are like they're so light you got to understand that they're really light this headliner is holding up fine and you got to understand these things are 0.75 millimeters or whatever like they're about as thin as a sheet of paper or something tiny like that like these holes even though they look like bright stars they're literally just like a little pinprick uh in the headliner now yeah that's definitely not gonna affect the I mean I can't say it's definitely not gonna affect the lifespan of your headliner but it's not gonna be enough to affect it not really no way not in the time that you're owning your car it shouldn't affect your lifespan of your headliner I feel very secure in my headliner oh another thing would I do this again um yeah I think I would do it again I don't know if I'd want to do it again to one of my cars because it was just a little more stressful when it's something that you paid for that you're invested in if you screw it up, it's on you and you still have to make car payments on it and stuff. So I don't know if I'd want to do it again to my car, but you know, if I had a, another car that was even awesomer than this car, yeah, I totally would do it again. If I have buddies that want to do it, I would totally help them do it, uh, assuming they bought everything. And uh, I don't know if I'd charge for it, but maybe not at first, but I probably would like want some some food like buy me some lunch or something <laughs> i don't know i i would probably do it to help out a friend just to also see how cool it comes out looking but i i wouldn't want to make a career out of this no way okay so another thing i wanted to explain that i didn't know about i actually didn't learn this from any of the youtube videos regarding this i actually learned about it from a fiber optic video a completely random like learning video but so I don't know if it's with these fiber optics, but I know fiber optics in general from this video explained it to me like this. So I used to think they're just like little pieces of plastic or like a rubber plastic and that they just, they stick in here. I heard if you bend them, it's not good. So if you bend them at like maybe if a, at a 90 degree angle, what happens is they don't, they don't just, uh, they don't conduct light as easily. So some light may still pass through, but it is not going to be as bright, not going to be as as good as it would be if, if it bends in. So no 90 degree angles, make sure it bends in. So when you poke the hole, you'll, you'll see that it has a slight little curvature to it. And that's okay. They can even curve like all the way around. That's okay too, but just no sharp bends. Um, the reason for this, from what I've learned, and if you have any other information that I'm wrong, correct me, I don't mind, but, so the way it works is there's a thin piece of glass in between, so in, inside of every fiber optic, there's a small microscopic or a small tiny 
thread of glass surrounded by a coating of like a PVC or some sort of like a clear plastic. So when, when you go to snip these, uh, you're kind of like snipping through a little bit of glass. Uh, and no, there's not glass on the floor, nothing like that. It's super tiny, nothing like that at all. But I'm just letting you know that when, when you're handling these, be very careful not to bend them. Uh, when you poke your holes in, don't smash them super flat because it, if you make them at a 90 degree angle, from what I've heard, they still will conduct some light, but not as much light. So just remember, like, you're kind of dealing with, like, a flexible glass coated with plastic, uh, and that's how they conduct their light. Okay, so how much did materials cost? Um... I got everything on Amazon. I didn't use eBay. I used Amazon because I'm impatient and I wanted everything on Prime. Also, Amazon had the box, the light engine that I really wanted and needed. So they have some light engines that have the music on or voice on, voice off, which makes the stars dance to the music and stuff like that. It kind of turns your car into like a club scene. Then they also have some that do uh, flashes, which it flashes different colors. Then they have a fade where it fades into different colors and they have one more that's like a I think it's like a uh, I don't know like a jump I have the remote right here so all right so let's go through this this remote here the one that I got on Amazon I'll pro yeah I'll try to provide the link in there I think I can figure out a way to do that so I'll put the link for the engine and all the materials I used for my car to get this set up Uh, this one has a three color jump. All right, so here's the remote. Let me see if I can get it to focus. I probably. All right, so this remote, it, it gets brighter, it dims, it has a red green blue like a yellow or yellow orange here's yellow another orange another shade of blue a different shade of blue again purple pink another type of purple and another type of purple uh, it also has the motor on or off so if I turn off the motor they'll stay stationary just like that and I like the motor on though, so I make sure to keep the motor on. I gotta hold it down for the motor on and push the button again for motor off. Uh, you can also control the speed of the twinkles. I haven't messed around with that much because I'm pretty happy with this, but you can make them go faster. You can make them go slower. I've gotten a lot of looks on this when I've taken it downtown on a Saturday night. Now, other cars that are taller than you, pickup trucks and even SUVs and crossovers, they cannot see this going on. But other cars that are low, they can totally see it, especially if they're just a little bit lower than you. Sometimes you'll see like a few race cars that are slammed. They, they can definitely see it. Uh, you're going to get a lot of looks everywhere you drive. People are going to be seeing like a... Like, you can't see it right now because I have a light over here on this side over here. But if I was in pitch black driving in the streets, you would see my face, like, glowing and twinkling. It sounds weird, I know. But, uh, so, yeah, you get a lot of looks. It's fun. It's a fun thing. All right, so we have a three-color jump, a seven-color jump, where you get to choose all seven colors you wanted to jump or three colors you wanted to jump. We have a, a three color fade where it'll fade between three colors, a seven color fade. I don't really mess with those a lot. We also have a flash, which I guess it just flashes maybe like a strobe. I haven't messed with that either. I don't know what that does. Let me see. Oh, I guess it flashes different stuff. We have breathe. Breathe, I believe, is supposed to like get brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer. And we also have the music on, music off, which also uh, it dances with the music or any type of loud noises. 
Sorry, I'm trying to talk and focus on you, but this thing is distracting. Anyway, so is it worth it? Yes, it's totally worth it. Would I do it again? Yes. If I got a better car than this and I thought it would be cool, I'll probably keep this car for a while though, but uh, yeah, I totally would do it again. Would I do it for a friend? Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, it's totally worth it. If you want to do it, make sure you have about three days, four days, or you know, even two days and a buddy. It'll help if you have a buddy and just knock it out. And it's not hard at all. Uh, just, you know, and there wasn't really even anything hard to like remember. Uh, to put things back together. I thought I was never going to remember where to put everything back together again, but it was not that hard at all. And also, um, what else? There's one more thing I was going to say. Oh, get get the trim tools. It's They're like five bucks. They're like six bucks. Just get the trim tool, trim removal tools. Don't use the stupid flathead screwdrivers because there was a few times that my screwdriver, well, I wasn't using a screwdriver, but the flat, the tools that I was using, they slipped and I could have poked a hole or tore my headliner. They, I had some force because sometimes removing some of the clips you're going to be removing, they're really in, they're really good. They haven't been touched in years. So when you try to remove them, they're not going to want to come out easily. Um, and you might slip and you don't want to cut like any of your trim tools like you don't want to cut any of your fabrics and stuff like that so the plastic i had some force on it and it slid across my headliner and slid across other parts of my uh car and everything was like perfectly fine it didn't scratch it or anything so if you're thinking about doing this do it if you have any other questions below uh ask me and um uh, I don't know. It's just really nice. I, I, I'm not going to say that I'm the first person to have the Mercedes because I saw one on YouTube that was an E-Class with a Starlight headliner. But I'm definitely going to say I'm the first one with the Mercedes CLA 250 with a headliner Starlight. And it's amazing. It gets a lot of looks. It It's fun to drive. It's a good uh, addition to having like a, some ambience, you know, like the ambience in here especially for like a, a night going out or anything it's fun do it uh if you have any questions ask me below i'll make sure to put some links for the products that i used and uh, if i missed anything please let me know and i'll answer them i read all my comments even if it's like two years later comment anyway i'll get back to you the the same day or same week i'm on youtube pretty frequently all right bye guys so this is it during the daylight hours it is eight o'clock in the morning i got the sun right in my face because you know it's still sunrise and in the background you can still see the stars in the headliner now you may not see them so much right now and that's only because like I said, the sun is not overhead yet, so the sun's still like coming right through my windshield and I'm facing towards the sun. But it's still it's still very much visible. Let me see if I can tilt it up. There you go. Car ride's a little bumpy, I need a new strut. That was my own fault, not the actual manufacturer's fault. So I'll be replacing that soon. Maybe I'll make another how-to video on how to replace that. Okay, that was it. And here's another video of me not facing the sun. This time the sun is on my right side. It's not coming in directly through the windshield and it's clearly visible that you are able to see the headliner twinkling even at 8.01 this morning.